Net neutrality is dead. Long live net neutrality. What is this going to mean? Does this mean you're going to have to pay an extra 10 bucks a month to your internet service provider to be able to go to YouTube? Does it mean prices are going to skyrocket? I don't know. I honestly don't know. The only thing I can tell you for certain is the Daily Dope is in the air. Yes, it is Thursday, December 14th. Welcome aboard, gang. Today is a crazy day. I know a lot of people out there are very, very upset about the FCC voting three to two to uh, eliminate effectively net neutrality. And I know a lot of people are freaking out about this and uh, it, it affects all of us. It really does. But I do want to mention don't get too worked up about this, people, because just because the FCC is is trying to take net, uh, basically dismantle net neutrality does not necessarily mean that's going to happen. In fact, you can take a look to see what the state of Washington was talking about yesterday. They had a lot of officials, uh, both Democrats and Republicans, who were talking about how the state of Washington is going to look to protect their citizens, their consumers, from any sort of uh, ISP shenanigans. So it, it does stink that the FCC voted to uh, basically dismantle net neutrality, but to be honest, we all saw that coming. We, in this environment, this political environment these days, we knew that was gonna happen. But that doesn't necessarily mean that things are going to change. So I did want to point that out. Anyway, it is Thursday. I've got a lot of stuff going on today. I've uh, been running around trying to get uh, everything set up. I've got a review of Vengeance from Greenbrier Games uh, a bit later in the show. And uh, Space is at a premium here in the Duct Tape Studios. So I've tried to squeeze things in uh, as best I can. And, and I'll kind of show off that when I do the review. But uh, I know a lot of people are looking forward to this game because it's arriving in stores. I believe Kickstarter backers started to already receive the game, but uh, it's going to hit stores in January and uh, looking pretty cool. Uh, I'll give you a hint. I dig it, but there are a couple of things I do want to discuss about it, too. Anyway, lots cooking today. So why not just move on to the news to begin with? And my first piece is actually about a Western-themed dice drafting slash resource management game that quite a few people were uh, keeping their eyes peeled for. And I do want to mention it did hit a bit of a delay. It was supposed to be released in November of this year. Now it's been pushed back to first quarter of 2018. And the game in question is Pioneer Days from Tasty Minstrel Games. Here's the dope. Settle up and guide your wagon train along the perilous Oregon Trail. Build a team of hardy folk and gather resources and equipment with a unique dice drafting system. But dangers await in the dice you don't choose. You can hire townsfolk, buy wagons, pan for gold, and take on cattle. Wouldn't you be driving cattle? I don't know if you'd be taking on cattle. Anyway, all the while preparing for inevitable raids, storms, and famine, who will best face the perils of the wild frontier and lead their wagon train to victory? Pioneer Days. Ugh, had a hard time getting that out there. Pioneer Days is a dice drafting game reminiscent of the Oregon Trail. And for those of you old enough to recall the Oregon Trail, I guess we should assume that uh, folks are going to die from dysentery and snake bites. Just a guess. While you pursue your strategy, you must be prepared for impending disasters such as storms, disease, raids, and famine. <laughs> All the fun stuff. 
Round by round, players draw dice out of the bag, roll them, and then take turns drafting one to either collect silver, hire a townfolk, or take an action based on the die value. Townsfolk confer immediate or constant benefits as well as end game scoring bonuses, while actions help you collect wood, medicine, cattle, equipment, and gold nuggets. What no sheep? The unchosen die each round advances one of the disaster tracks based on its color. And when a disaster gets to the end of its track, all players must deal with its effects. During a raid, you'll lose half your silver. Hate when that happens. During a famine, you'll need to spend one silver per cattle or lose the cattle. Hey, all this is costing me money so far. During a disease, I guess it's not going to cost you money, but you need one medicine per townsfolk or lose the townsfolk. During a storm, you need one wood per wagon or suffer damage to your wagons. At the end of each round, you can satisfy the current town's favor conditions in order to earn their, yes, you guessed it, favor. Prepare for the disasters while you pursue your strategy and earn the most points to win the game. Pioneer Days is for 2-4 to four players ages 14 and up, plays in around 45-60 to 60 minutes, and will carry an MSRP of $59.95. And interestingly enough, looking at the graphics here, you would think it's more of a kind of a family game, just kind of the look of it. But obviously, <laughs> when you've got raids and disease, famine, all those things, that's probably not really appropriate for the little ones. Anywho, uh, I do know a lot of people were looking forward to this arriving on the scene. Uh, there was actually rumor that we'd maybe see it this month, but uh, I believe it was yesterday uh, word broke officially that it's going to be Q1. Anyway, you say you like gardening, you say you love flowers. Well, then a new title coming from Ninja Division might be just right for you. Even if you aren't much of a green thumb, you and the family may get a kick out of the competition involved in becoming a master horniculturist in Dance of the Fireflies. Here's the dope from Ninja Division. Dance of the Fireflies is a new 2-6 player card game by Oliver Brooks. Tompkins, his lordship's longest serving and most trusted horniculturist, is retiring and the prize position of head gardener is up for grabs. Join his team of green-fingered underlings as you compete to create the most beautiful flower beds in the garden. The more flowers you plant, the more fireflies will visit your patch. And that's a sure way to please her ladyship and see your career blossom. Ah. In Dance of the Fireflies, each player is allocated a set of seven fireflies, one of them being a royal firefly, more powerful than the regular fireflies. In each round, the players bid on flowers in the flower clock using their fireflies. They can also plant a flower from their hand into one of their gardens, secretly bid a royal firefly, and also discard one of the cards in their hand to compost heat so they can bid a second firefly on the flower clock. Each of the six types of beautifully colored flowers has a special ability which players can utilize to form combos and add benefits to their play. Additionally, orchid slash weed cards can be bid on, and these allow players to add bonuses to their gardens or attack an opponent's garden. Damn you weeds! Once all the flowers have been exhausted from the potting shed, the game ends and points are total for flower beds created to see who wins and becomes the next royal gardener. Dance of the Fireflies is for two to six players, ages eight and up, plays in around 15 to 30 minutes, and it will carry an MSRP of $24.99. I do want to mention also, it appears that the game is going to ship with rules in both English and German. Pretty interesting. Uh, usually you'll see different uh, editions come out depending on the country. So I thought that's kind of kind of interesting that um, Ninja Division decided that they're going to just include English and German rules and player aids, I believe, in uh, one box. Hmm. 
saves on production costs, that's for sure. Coming very shortly from my good friends over at Aldrac Entertainment is the latest in their Big in Japan lineup, Sakura Arms. The two-player fighting card game has done really well in the land of the rising sun and is now making its way to the States. I have to say, every time I see Big in Japan, I just want to start busting out that, uh, that song. You know, things are easy when you're big in Japan. Anyway, here's the dope from my pals at AEG. Sakura Arms is a two-player fighting card game where players control the powers of the Megami. I'm hoping I'm getting that right. These Megami are channeled through the delicate petals of the Sakura tree. Choose two Megami each game to create combinations of powers. Hmm, sounds a little bit like Smash Up. You know, where you're taking two factions, putting them together. Anyway... Defeat your opponent and prove you are the most powerful fighter. Sakura Arms is an elegant game from Japan designed by Bakafire. The game has already become hugely popular in Japan with tournaments and an online game in the works. Featuring stunning art and design, the game is both easy to learn and incredibly challenging. Well, at least AEG did not use the uh, easy to learn difficult to master line that we see everywhere place the pedals on your hands and face your destiny sakura arms is a two-player dueling game in which players first choose two of seven megami which are japanese goddesses each of which has a different keyword which empowers some of their cards players then see what the opponent shows before assembling a deck of 10 out of 22 cards with the players choosing cards both to take advantage of their own Megami powers and to exploit their opponent's weaknesses. Players then duel to see who will be victorious. The game uses a single kind of token to represent life, distance, aura, which is defense, and flare, which is a special energy. The tokens represent this based on the zone they occupy. By moving tokens between zones, you attempt to gain the ideal position and set up to use as many attacks as possible or be prepared to avoid attacks. The gameplay at its core is simple and due to its limited environment, it's relatively easy to learn the cards for a deck building game. Building a deck and playing normally takes less than 20 minutes. As I previously mentioned, Sakura Arms is for two players, ages 14 and up, plays in about 30 minutes, I would say, although AG has indicated about 20. I am also hearing about 30, which is fine. I mean, come on, it's 10 minutes. And it's going to carry an MSRP of $29.99. Always dig all the different unique games that come out from my friends over at uh, Alderac Entertainment, or as those of us in the know like to refer to them, AEG. Anyway, so you want some uh, role-playing news? Well, then you've got some role-playing news because Modifius Entertainment has announced the new role-playing game based on the elite dangerous PC game of space exploration and trading. Here's the dope from Modifius. Or is it Modifius? I think it's Modifius. I forget. I'll have to ask Chris. I, I could have swore it's Modifius. Maybe it's Modifius. Sorry, Chris. Sorry if I'm, I'm getting it wrong. Anyway, the dope from, from Modifius. Today, we're pleased to announce a pre-order for the brand new Elite Dangerous RPG from Spider-Mind Games based on the awesome Elite Dangerous video game from Frontier Developments. We've got the Elite Dangerous RPG core book, plus a collector's box set and several exceptional bundles for pre-order, and all pre-orders will also receive free PDFs of the Quick Start Adventure, The Worst Intentions. A Quick Start map, Quick Start counters, form-fillable character sheets, ship rosters, a ship combat map, and an SRV combat map. Is that like a super recreational vehicle? I don't know. The Elite Dangerous RPG core book, shipping in January 2018 in both print and PDF, is an interactive adventure you share with a group of friends. Well, that would 
be a role-playing game, yes. It's set in a futuristic galaxy in which spaceflight is common, amazing technology is freely available, and danger is everywhere. As a player, you'll own your own spacecraft and travel to fantastic locations, exploring new worlds, defeating deadly enemies, and outwitting powerful opponents who will stop at nothing to destroy you. The Elite Dangerous box set, which is shipping in March of 2018, will contain a hardback Elite Dangerous RPG core book, plus the four supplements, Military, Espionage, Exploration, and Super Traders in softback, all contained in a special collector's sleeve. The print edition carries an MSRP of approximately $54 with the exchange rate right now. Well, I would take a guess the PDF should be available here in the U.S. for about half that price. I do have to mention a couple of things uh, regarding this news piece as well as uh, Modifius, Modifius, Chris Birch's company. <laughs> One, it's pretty obvious that Elite Dangerous is from another company that's being published through Modifius because usually John and Chris just have loads and loads of news about and they just go into so much detail about all the new stuff that's coming out. Whereas here, not a whole lot of info. So obviously I can tell that it's you know, an outside company that it's being published by Modifius. The other thing I wanted to mention is I did notice, and I believe it's, I think it's at the $20 threshold right now over on the Modifius website is if you spend, it might be 20 or 30, but if you make a purchase uh, at that, at that amount, you're going to immediately get a free PDF. They're giving you a choice and there's some really cool stuff in there. Uh, there's the third edition uh, Mutant Chronicles uh, core book. There's a couple of Octon Cthulhu uh, major supplements, like the Investigator's Guide, and uh, also the um, Octon Cthulhu skirmish rules. Uh, absolutely free in PDF if you place your order. So I thought that was uh, I thought that was pretty neat. In comic book news. Diamond Comic Distributors has revealed the gold sponsor titles for Free Comic Book Day 2018. Of course, comic book fans already know that Free Comic Book Day is, is the day that the comic industry gets together and you can go into your, your friendly local comic store and there are free comics for you to score. And it's pretty cool. It's a great way to introduce folks to comic books. Plus, it's kind of a thank you to longtime comic buyers. I could just read you the list of the titles, but you know what? Diamond Distributor, or I should say Diamond Comic Distributors, everybody just says Diamond, was kind enough to put together an entire video that's going to kind of show off all of the comics. I believe there's a dozen that are going to be featured as gold sponsors. I do want to point out though, I'm going to share this video with you. It is about seven and a half minutes long. So if you need to take a bathroom break, <laughs> go ahead. You want to make a sandwich, grab something to eat, go ahead. If you're not interested in comics is what I'm saying. And of course, if you are not watching this live and you're watching this on demand later on, if you're not interested, just skip ahead a little bit. The other thing I will point out is the way the video is formatted, you're not going to see the covers as well as I would like to present. But the thing is, I wasn't going to tear apart the entire layout <laughs> of, of the feed just to feature one video. So I do apologize for that. But yeah, listen in. You'll hear what's cooking. So without further ado, let's find out what are some of the really cool things you can score this May for free comic book day. Free comic book day 2018 happens on May 5th at your local comic shop. It's the biggest comics event of the year and you don't want to miss it. Now it's time to reveal the 12 2018 gold sponsor comics 
that you can get for free on the first Saturday in May. First from Archie Comics is Riverdale. Set in the same universe as the hit CW series, this reprint issue of Riverdale number six gives us a peek into all the secrets Pop Tate overhears in his day-to-day -day business told through four stories in four different booths. Boom Studios presents the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers special. Featuring an all new original Power Rangers story exclusive to Free Comic Book Day. This issue ties into the Power Rangers Shattered Grid storyline in the pages of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and Saban's Go Go Power Rangers comic series. Zordon turns to the Morphin Masters for help in the Power Rangers Darkest Hour as they battle Lord Draken, an evil version of Tommy the Green Ranger from an alternate reality as he threatens every ranger in all of existence. Next from Dark Horse Comics is stories from Overwatch and Black Hammer. Two different worlds, two compelling tales. In Overwatch, Agent Zarya is sent to eliminate an elusive hacker and she's at her wit's end. She reluctantly teams up with an Omnic hacker. As they hone in on their target, Zarya realizes that she has to reassess her worldview about Omnics. Then in the world of creator Jeff Lemire's Black Hammer, but a thousand years in the future, a collection of teenage superheroes inspired by the legendary heroes of Black Hammer Farm are determined to solve the riddle of what happened to those last great heroes of the 20th century. DC Entertainment's Gold Comic is a special top secret project too big to announce. Check back at freecomicbookday.com for future updates. From first second, it's Comics Friends Forever. This amazing free comic book day anthology celebrates kids comics, girl power, and the amazing work of creators Vera Brosgal, Hope Larson, Sharice Miracle Harper, Ben Hatke, Shannon Hale, and Laywin Pham. Don't miss out on this comic filled with the power of friendship that's great for every kid reader. From IDW Publishing, it's Transformers Unicron, The Darkest Hour, number zero. Not a whimper nor a bang. The end comes with a squall of entropy shrieking from a ravenous maw of death itself. The message is clear. Unicron has arrived. The Transformers are locked into a desperate bid to save Rom's homeworld from the world killer. But why has Unicron chosen this world on his path to Cybertron and Earth. The biggest story in the history of Transformers starts now. For Unicron's arrival can mean nothing less than the end of a universe. Next from Image Comics is Barrier Number One. From Brian K. Vaughn and Marcos Martin, the Eisner Award-winning team behind The Private Eye, Barrier finally comes to print in an acclaimed five-part miniseries. This massive 53-page first issue is available for free on Free Comic Book Day, with the next four issues being released weekly throughout the rest of May. Printed in its original landscape format, there are no plans for these print issues to ever be collected, so the only way to own your own copies of this groundbreaking story is by supporting your friendly neighborhood comic shop. From Joe Books, it's Disney Princess Ariel Spotlight. The FCBD edition of Joe Book's best-selling Disney Princess comic puts the spotlight on Ariel for the very first time. Collecting both new and fan-favorite strips, this exclusive comic book will contain giggles aplenty as everyone's favorite mermaid seeks out sunken treasure, tries to figure out human gadgets and gizmos, and embarks on new adventures with Flounder and Sebastian. Featuring an FCBD exclusive cover artwork, drawn by Disney princess artist Amy Meberson. Marvel Comics Gold title will feature the Avengers and Captain America. Don't miss this year's free comic book day titles from Marvel, each featuring two new 10-page stories that set the stage for upcoming game changers in the Marvel Universe. Get ready as heroes assemble in the Marvel Universe. Next from Oni Press, it's Invader Zim, Floopsie Bloops Shroopsie. Remember that funny green alien you used to watch on TV? No, not that one. 
No, no, the other green alien. Okay, it's Zim, all right. Invader Zim. Well, Zim sometimes watches TV too, and sometimes it's bad TV. Very, very bad TV. So now you can watch Zim watching a very bad show called Bloopsy Bloops Schmoopsy. All 385 seasons, 24 7, never stopping. Titan Comics offers Doctor Who number zero. An all new era for Doctor Who starts here, featuring the first chapter in the new 10th and 11th Doctor sagas by new creative teams too electrifying to spoil here plus tantalizing glimpses from across the Doctor Who comics universe, including your first look at the 13th Doctor in comics. Perfect for new readers and long-term fans alike, this is the ultimate jumping on point. Everything begins in this amazing number zero issue. Don't miss out on Titan's colossal plans for 2018. And finally, from Viz Media is Pokemon Sun and Moon, Pokemon Horizon. In Pokemon Horizon, Akira's summer vacation in the Alola region heats up when he befriends a rock ruff with a mysterious gemstone. Together, Akira hopes they can achieve his dream by becoming a Pokemon trainer and learning the amazing Z-Move. But first, Akira needs to pass a test to earn a trainer passport. This becomes even more difficult when rock ruff gets kidnapped. And in Pokemon Sun and Moon, Sun dreams of money Moon dreams of scientific discoveries. When their paths cross with Team Skull, both their plans go awry. Those are the 12 Gold Sponsor comics you can get for free at your local comic shop on May 5th, 2018. But that's not all. There will be 50 free comics available on Free Comic Book Day. So stay tuned to freecomicbookday.com where next week, we'll reveal the remaining 38 silver titles for Free Comic Book Day 2018. All right, so pretty cool. So there are the dozen or so gold sponsors for Free Comic Book Day 2018. Before I move into the review for Vengeance from Greenbrier Games, uh, just a couple of quick things I want. Well, maybe not so quick. Just a couple of things that I was going to um, kind of talk about a little bit. First off, as far as the way things are laid out now. Uh, hello, Nimi Jutron. Okay. Hey, right back to you. Uh, as far as the chat, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep the chat up on the screen or if I'm just going to have chat through say for an example just YouTube because right now the live stream is going through YouTube as well as Twitch I would really kind of like to do a stream on Facebook live unfortunately the way things are set up the way my internet service is set up if I did Facebook live it would cost me about $15 a month so I don't know if I really want to do that just yet, since right now we're just kind of in a soft rollout for the Daily Dope anyway. So there's that. And uh, like I said, I'm not I'm not sure what I'm going to do with chat. <laughs> Funny enough, hardly anybody actually gets involved in chat and I, I don't expect them to. And so far, all I've really had popping up were trolls anyway. So, you know, it is what it is. Anyway, the other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to dip in the mailbag because if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, you can email me at mailbag at thegaminggang.com. And I did receive an email from Claire in Clearwater, Florida. That kind of rolls off the tongue, right? Claire in Clearwater. Ooh. Say that 10 times fast. And her question is, why does it take the gaming gang longer to review games that other reviewers have reviews up right away for? And I, okay, and that's true. I see that. I see that a lot. And I am going to be very, very upfront. I always believe in being transparent with how I go about running the gaming gang. And of course, obviously now with this, the show, The Daily Dope, First off, 
when I do a review, I need to play the game at least three times. Unless I really dislike the game. It takes a lot for me to hate a game, and hate's a weird word to use in the first place about gaming anyway. I don't, I don't think I really use the word hate about anything. Anyway, uh, I will play a game three times because it's very easy to play a game wrong. And I, I have a few prime examples. One is uh, Cargo Noir that came out a few years back from Days of Wonder. Played it once. Thought, ugh, what, what, is, what is with this game? This game doesn't make sense. The scoring doesn't make any sense. Blah, blah, blah. Finished playing the first game. Then went and dug through the rule book and found out, yeah, I had scoring rules wrong. Completely changed my opinion of Cargo Noir. So I always make sure three plays, even if a game strikes me as, wow, this was really good the first time out. I want to play it a couple more times just to see if the bloom falls off the rose, so to speak. Because a lot of people out there, they don't want to be spending 40, 50, 80 dollars on a game that they're going to have a great time playing once or twice. They want something that they're going to bring to the table multiple times and enjoy it pretty much every time out. So that's why it takes longer for me to get reviews out. Uh, I used to have other people who contributed as reviewers and some were great and just, you know, family commitments, time restraints, things like that. They kind of fell off uh, and, you know, left the gaming gang. I have had other people who kind of come on board and I got games sent to them. And then that was the last I ever heard. So, and then of course, you know, I don't mind looking like a dope, <laughs> you know, when I mess something up. And it's my fault. Hey, you know what? That's okay. That's one of the reasons why this show is called The Daily Dope. It's not just the news, but I usually do something odd, off the wall, whatever. Screw something up. Just about probably every day on this. So there you go. I'm, I'm The Daily Dope and you're getting The Daily Dope. So I don't mind that. But when something is completely outside my control that makes me or my website that I have operated since 2010 look bad, then there's a problem. So it's funny, I would like to bring more contributors on because there are only so many hours in the day. This is not my life. I love it. I enjoy it. Uh, I'm investing much more time in it because obviously you can see I'm sitting here in front of this camera. But plus the other thing too is uh, you know, there are some games that like, especially games that are for, you know, smaller kids or, you know, eight, nine year old kids and the family. I don't have kids myself. I don't really have access to children to, who are going to be able to play these games. My niece and nephew are a little too old for that, uh, that age range. So, you know, I'd be cool with, you know, trying to bring some people on. But, when, you know, when you're burned a couple of times, and then you have to look like a moron or like sketchy, even though the company sent it to those person's addresses, they didn't send them to me and I forwarded them on. Gotta be careful. Something else I'm gonna mention, and I'm not going to call out any reviewers by name or websites or videos or anything like that. But I will point out that there are reviewers out there who, let's say it's a four player game they sit down by themselves and kind of run through the game and then they review it, right? It, this happens, folks. <laughs> Come on. <sighs> when you see people where every day they've got two reviews, a new, and I'm not talking Tom Vassell, okay? Because that's like his career. Plus, Tom can't even keep up with the demand, right? He's got other folks working with him too. So don't think I'm talking about the Dice Tower. I'm not talking about the Dice Tower. But there are people out there who just, you know, just play it once, maybe a few rounds of the game to kind of get a feel for it, and then they put out a review. And, and the big key to that is you'll see, and it's a, it's a big thing going on right, right now, when you go to a website and they do a written review, and all they do is really rehash the rules at you for like three, four paragraphs, they love to shove these big, huge photos that are taking up all this, you know, column space, right? But in reality, you read through it, it's about three paragraphs, and then you're looking at 
basically, oh, maybe a paragraph, maybe two sentences, um, who talk about basically the, uh, like their summary. And their summary is like, yeah, I liked it. It was good. That told me nothing. So I do see a comment and I, the camera's kind of blocking it off. Game journalists who really don't understand games. Hey man, you know what? I'm assuming you're a man. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, hey gamer, <laughs> you're right on the money with that too because I have run across people who are reviewers who do not know the difference between theme and mechanics. I can't see how you can be a reviewer if you don't know the difference between the theme of the game and the mechanics of the game. That's a big uh, red flag. So anyway, uh, so yes, there are reviewers out there who only play something one time. There are reviewers out there who do not even play the game. They read the rules and then they write the review. You've got others out there who, and like I said, I'm not naming names, but once you're a gamer for a while and, and you've been burned by people's reviews where they said, oh, this game is great. And it turns out it's not. They're basically shills. So anyway, so that's that's why, to get long story short, that's why it does take me longer to get reviews out there for various games. That's why you don't see tons and tons of reviews. So that was the um, the the answer there. And did I see that video of the gaming journalist who couldn't even get past the tutorial in Cupherd? Cuphead. No, uh, I did not. Just so, uh, just so you know, <laughs> I don't look at other gaming websites or gaming feeds or anything like that as competition. I know there are people out there, you know, I'm a competitor. You know what? I just do my thing. I've been doing my thing since 2010. I got about 10,000 unique visitors going to the gaming gang every day. The viewership of these videos really can't, you can't really judge anything yet because it's not as if I'm out there banging the drum about it. This is a soft rollout. Um, so anyway, uh, I don't look at people as competition. I really don't. In fact, another email I got, which I'm not going to discuss today because I want to get into this review. Uh, another email I got was asking, how, do, how does someone get started uh, doing uh, like board games, tabletop gaming? reviews for a website. How do you create your own website? And the funny thing is I thought to myself, okay, so if they had emailed just about anybody else, they would not get any kind of response. Um, I will be more than happy to kind of discuss that a little bit. I mean, not super in depth. Uh, I think maybe Monday. I think I will, I, I can't think of the person's name off the top of my head who did email me. But anyway, all right, so enough of my pontification. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to point that out. It's not because I, you know, I'm snoozing, <laughs> you know, I'm out, you know, out at the bars hanging out. That's why I, I'm not getting like reviews up like ASAP. Uh, it's just that I need to play these a few times and I try to play them with different people and I don't always have the same gaming gang around me uh, on a Friday night or Saturday to uh to play with so you know i know who some games are more suited for as opposed to others all right so i know people are watching live or they're just hanging out or they're they're catching this later on because they want to see me review vengeance from my good friends over at greenbrier games so let's move on over to that and i pointed out a little earlier in the show Space is at a huge, huge premium here in the duct tape studios. So I've tried to squeeze in what I kind of can as far as vengeance. And, uh, well, can't take the box cover, so I'll just do, there we go. Hey, let's pretend that is the box cover. So this is vengeance. And vengeance is not available just yet. And uh, one thing I do want to mention, and if this is the first time you're you're kind of tuning in, I'm going to point out that uh, I'm very conversational. So if you're sitting, you probably already figured this out. But uh, if you're thinking it's all, I'm just going to be like, boom, boom, face, 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 blah, 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 game, 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 game. No, it's not going to happen. So one thing I did want to mention uh, as far as vengeance 
It is going to be arriving in stores, both uh, brick and mortar and online in January. Vengeance did ship out to uh, the Kickstarter backers, so they already have it. Do not, this is just my opinion, I'm just saying, do not get suckered into paying $175 or more. I have seen it on the secondary market uh, for $175 and up to grab this game because it's not, the game has not sold out. Now, I can't tell you, you know, how many copies have been been produced or anything like that. I did not ask my good friend, Julie Ahern, over at Greenbrier, those kind of numbers. But uh, so if you're, if we go through the review and you're interested, by all means, go over to greenbriargames.com and place an order or go uh, to your online game stores. They're doing it for pre-order. The MSRP on this is $95. So that is the MSRP. If you can find it for a different price, knock yourself out, right? Okay, so let me grab a, a sip here. So Vengeance, and, and I'm going to also point out that there's a lot to this game that is not here, that is not in front of you right now. And I will try to kind of show some stuff off, other stuff sitting in the box, and the box is over on the side because I've just got so much stuff all over this place. <laughs> if people saw what this actually looks like beyond <laughs> the camera lens, uh, I can only imagine. But I'm going to kind of just focus more kind of top level about the game. I'm not going to go into just you know, all this different stuff. Uh, every single wrinkle of the game. Uh, some folks out there have seen my uh, Zapocalypse 2 Defend the Burbs review. And that was a 90 minute review. <laughs> so I don't really want to end up going into so much detail that People are waiting for a Gone with the Wind or Lawrence of Arabia-ish intermission break with music and all so they can go, go to the lobby, go to the bathroom, things like that. So the setup of Vengeance is pretty simple. We've seen umpteen movies over our entire lifetimes where it is someone has been wronged and by by criminals, by bad guys, and that person takes it upon themselves to actually go and seek vengeance, get revenge on those who have done them wrong. Be it uh, a murdered a spouse or a child. We see Liam Neeson in a lot of movies like this now, uh, Taken for an example, although he's kind of got the upper hand usually. A uh, perfect example for me, and I'm, you know, I'm old school. I think people are figuring this out. And uh, I think a lot of people uh, like my age will remember movies like Death Wish with Charles Bronson. Kill Bill is a great example as well. Uh, old Boy, films like that, where the the protagonist isn't necessarily some, you know, super heroish guy. Uh, anyway, so with Vengeance, you will have a hero and you're going to have a hero board. I'm going to lift a, a lot of this stuff up here so you can kind of take a peek. And then we may not actually get uh, a good look at it again. It'll be probably be down here. So everyone's going to get a hero board and the hero board's going to have some cool background. It's going to Give you a backstory. I am playing with Shadow Man, and Shadow Man happens to be kind of the easiest character. There's a kind of a starting scenario to kind of get you used to the game mechanics and everything. So Shadow Man just happens to be that character. You do have uh, six characters that you can choose from. Oh yeah, of course. I don't I don't have them anywhere nearby me. Uh no, I don't think I don't believe so. Okay, so anyway, so you got six different characters. 
So that was the back of the board. And now you've got the front. So we're going to see that right here, just pretty much a breakdown of the gameplay, how each round works. Then we're going to have these trackers here. We've got mind, skill, health. You're going to start out, here's, here's your maximum, and then you're going to have cubes that are going to start moving these down. And one thing I, I point out, I want to point out right away, is the only time you're going to be fully healthy is before the game starts. <laughs> it's the only time you're going to be in good shape. Because right off the bat, you are going to receive a beat down. So, there we got, go there. Uh, and I apologize as far as some of the questions coming through in chat. Uh, you know, I'm in the midst of a review. I don't have time to answer questions like, do I play a lot of board games or what board games do I owe, own or how many? Anyway, so, so we've got the character here. We're going to have these cubes. These are just regular cubes where you're going to track damage on your mind, skill, and health. Then there's also black cubes, which are uh, especially devastating damage that you've taken. It's just harder to remove those cubes. But we also see here that we have some upgrade slots, which I'll discuss in a moment. And then each of the characters is going to have sort of a special skill. So Shadow Man's special skill is on these dice that you're going to roll during the combat, you can change a gun or a single uh, melee hit, I guess we would call it, to a run symbol. Okay. You'll also get, along with your character, you're going to get this breakdown of their objectives. In order to truly win the game because this is a multiplayer game and everybody is playing someone who's been wronged. You do not have people playing the baddies. So it's going to tell you what is your character's motivation? What are they looking to do? So for an example, for Shadow Man, he needs to kill Roxy Queen and finish the run with no more than four stress cubes on the mind track. And uh, some of them have additional rules. Some have a lot of stuff on here. Others do not. Here, I'll give you an example. I've got, uh, here are some of the other character kind of little summaries or, you know, their victory objectives. I mean, for an example, right here, there are just loads and loads of additional rules and stuff. So as I mentioned, There were five characters? Wait a second, I thought, yeah, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> we've only played with four, so, and it's only a four player game. Maybe I'm missing a card. Okay, so anyway, so you'll, you'll have your character, you're gonna select your character, and you're gonna start setting the game up. You do have a turn tracker, and it's got a little miniature of a combat knife with those attached brass knuckles. And you're going to track the turn, the axe of the game, because the first is the wronging. That's where the, the beatdown takes place. This is where your character decides, hey, okay, I'm not taking this anymore. Then we've got a montage, which is where you're going to pretty much kind of train your character. Then there's a combat phase. Then we move into another montage, two more combats, another montage, two more combats and the end. So there's, there's quite a bit of combat going on throughout the game, but the combat moves pretty quickly. It's not overly tactical as far as the combat goes. And we also have a victory point tracker and I forgot to put little, <laughs> little tokens out here for victory points. But as you progress through the game, each of the players has a colored disc and they're going to just track their victory points. Now alongside, we see that there's an area for four cards and these four cards are what adds a lot of replayability to Vengeance because every time out, you're gonna have something a little bit different that's going to score you extra victory points. 
So for an example here, equal rights, the player with the highest number of scored vengeance cards with differently named bosses gains four victory points. On a tie, all tied players gain two. Another one, kill them all. Player with the highest number of scored vengeance cards of a single gang gains four victory points. On a tie, everybody gets two. So these are just little different things that uh, will kind of change up the way you will also approach the game. Because everybody's looking to extract vengeance upon the gang that had wronged them, but you're also looking to score victory points to, to actually beat your opponents. Then we've got ability upgrades, which these are placed out on the board face down. So I've got ability upgrades and item upgrades, and you'll see that there's these little lightning bolt symbols. And that just basically is telling you what does that cause during the montage phase? So I'm going to flip these up. So we've got knife throw, another knife throw, and there's a lot of these. There's, there's uh, quite a lot of these ability upgrades, not as many item upgrades, slow-mo leap. Uh, run gun and you'll see a lot of this is uh, a lot of these are giving you an option as I try to get even closer here they're giving you options on changing how your dice are rolled then we got the item upgrades and some of these items are just one shots so you only get to use it one time and then you discard it so we got some brass knuckles, a couple of machetes. Wow, that wasn't a very good random, <laughs> random uh, selection there. So these are going to stay face up. Everybody's going to be able to get to see them. And as these are purchased, you're just going to refresh these uh, during the montage phase. We do have the den boards. These are This is where the combat action takes place. And there are loads of these. I'll just kind of zoom in a little bit, get a better look here. And it's going to show you where the uh, the baddies are going to be placed on this board. And if you notice here, it shows two. Now, this little symbol here means victory points. It almost kind of looks like a if you if you're not looking really close, it looks like it's kind of a gear. But it's actually supposed to be like a bullet hole. <laughs> So that's worth two. This is uh, kind of like this wild token that if you've cleared that off and there's a wild token on here, you get to take the token anyway. Uh, and I'll talk about that in just a sec. Okay, so you've got the den. And funny enough, Greenbrier Games uh, and Julie over at Greenbrier jokes with me about this all the time. They, uh, they pack so much stuff. I mean, this is a heavy box. This is a big, heavy box. And... They like to, to have it where if you were to chuck one of their game boxes at somebody's head, you would really do some serious harm. The other thing that uh, I want to mention as far as Greenbrier Games is Greenbrier Games likes to create these games that uh, would make, <laughs> make you have to bust out the biggest table you possibly can find to play. So we see that we've got this, this den, right? This, this enemy den. You're actually going to have six of these out on the table. <laughs> so there are a wide variety of these different dens. And they're going to go from two victory points to three victory points to four victory points. And as you progress through the uh, combat rounds and the montages, you're going to start swapping out these dens to go with higher victory points, which of course means much, much tougher. So for an example, this is uh, not really a pool hall. It's just sort of like um, some big bosses, kind of like game room or something along those lines. But each one of these spaces here indicates a bad guy. And this space here, that means that's that's the spot that the character comes into. 
Now, as you're looking at these areas, there isn't, there's no like grid system or hexes or anything like that as far as movement. Everything is from one area to the other area. That's where the, all the movement that's being taking place. So this is considered one area. This is considered one area. This is considered another area. So is out here. You can't move through walls, but you'll see where these little divided lines are. That's showing out, you know, this is how the area is broken up. So there are quite a lot of these. And as I mentioned, you would have six of them laid out. So plus you figure, you know, there's all these different decks of cards. There's there's like just tons of stuff that's all like off here that I can kind of like grab at as I'm as I'm talking about the game. All right. So anyway, so uh, once you've once you started off, if you've got your character, everybody is going to get vengeance cards. These are vengeance cards. And the Vengeance cards show different bad guys, as well as bosses, as well as unaffiliated Blitz cards that the characters are going to have. So everybody's going to start off with nine. And I'll show you what these Blitz cards look like. So we're going to see here in the upper left, that's a designation of what clan, what gang, this uh, this guy is uh, a henchman, so he's he's kind of like a mid-level boss because you have the big bosses. So anyway, so it's going to show okay, that is the henchman's clan. His name. It's going to show victory points here, and the victory points, as far as vengeance cards go, it's going to be based on how many of this card you have in play. I'll get to that in a sec. And then at the bottom, if you look, it's going to talk about. Okay, what do they do? So this says bashing to hurt. Hurts is your health. Broken is your skill. Uh, so it, we see we've got two hurts. We've got severe broken. So that would be a black cube. One stress, one severe broken, one broken, one hurts. What this indicates down here is when this vengeance card is played by the player, they have to immediately take these effects. So it's not as if your character has been wronged once. It's just a constant onslaught from these gangs just beating down on your character. That's why I had mentioned, <laughs> really, you're only going to see your character be fully healthy before the game even starts. So everybody's going to get nine of these vengeance cards and they're going to play four of them. And as we, as we can see, there's the different gangs. So I have not cheated with this hand here. I have cheated a little bit with, uh, oh, there he is boss card on the den on the den board. So we know that shadow man, by looking at the objectives, one of his objectives is to kill Roxy queen who is the head of the Lords is the gang that she's the head of, which is green. So we're trying to, we're trying to score victory points and we're trying to get to the point where we can get the big boss that we need to kill. Now, not every character has a big boss they need to kill. One of the characters is um, kill. Uh, I believe it's kill a henchman and a big boss, one or the other, from every gang. Now there's four gangs. You play with four gangs in a four player game. You only play with three gangs in a two player game. So you're going to have these, these four, you're gonna have nine vengeance cards actually, and you're gonna play four. And what's gonna happen is the four you play, let's go, let's do that. Uh, yeah, what do we got? What do we got? I don't want to have this guy completely you know, busted up. I don't want any of the severes yet. So we got two hurt, one stress. Uh, okay, chop finger. All right, whatever. And then... 
sensory deprivation. Okay, so each of the players is going to have to play for these vengeance cards. So you're going to play these four cards and you're going to lay them out in front of you. All the rest of the cards are hidden. So right away we know that Shadow Man during the during the beatdown, I'm going to try to push this up a little bit. Takes two hurts, so the health drops, boom, boom, there's two. Got one stress, boom. One stress. One broken, one hurt. Oh, of course I don't have enough cubes. Dummy. <laughs> Got to take, uh, forgot to take those out. All right, so where are we at? Uh, we had one stress, so we got another hurt. Got a broken. And another stress. All right, so. So right now, we, we'll look at these numbers here, and these numbers are going to indicate how many dice we're going to be able to get. So anything that requires us to roll the skill dice, we're only going to get to roll two. I'm sorry, uh, mind dice, we're only going to get to roll two. Skill, we're going to get four. So that is before you've even really started yet. <laughs> it's going to be, oh my gosh, seriously? <laughs> So yes, yeah, so Shadow Man's already uh, been uh, dinged up. So we've got these Vengeance cards. These would be in play in front of us. And I'm just going to pop these down. So once everybody has uh, had their characters get uh, slapped around quite a bit, then you're going to move on to your first montage. And this is this is where one of the kind of kind of cool, different aspects of vengeance comes into play because a lot of people are already looking at the game thinking to themselves uh from what they've probably just seen just just some information like if they were kind of shopping around like so let's say they're at some online retailer and they're they're looking at the info on the game they're gonna have the impression that this is you know you know really in-depth kind of tactical melee combat okay well i'm gonna use my knife here and i attack this way, but it's really not. There's a draft dice, uh, I'm sorry, there's a dice drafting mechanic to the game, as well as dice allocation. So the first thing you're gonna go into, everybody's gonna get ready for their montage. So this is the part where, okay, you know, think of a Rocky movie, you know, just da -da -da -da, you know. If you want, you can play Eye of the Tiger by Survivor if you want. So you can do that. Hey, uh, and funny enough, <laughs> the band Survivor is originally from, is from Chicago, right? So when that song, I mean, there were some Survivor songs that we, we would hear here on our rock station in the Chicago area. But when Eye of the Tiger became a big hit, every time that was coming on, they would say, now it's Chicago's very own Survivor and Eye of the Tiger. They said that so much, you'd have thought the name of the band was Chicago's very own Survivor. <laughs> I was like, come on. Okay, so you've got that montage scene. You got the you got the scene where Ralph Macchio is <laughs> yeah, doing a lot of waxing on and waxing off. And, uh, oh gosh, you got Rocky. I mean, you got all these. This, montages are, are were super big 80s, 90s. Don't see them as often. Uh, in action movies these days and usually if you do they're they're kind of making a you know sly nod or a wink at those kind of action movies all right so in the montage what you're going to do is each player is going to get the number of dice that they have for mind and they're going to roll their dice and every everybody's going to roll them together. So as an example, I've got, let's say this is a, it's got a two player game and 
one player has, uh, they're down to a two, so we know Shadow Man's down to a two. Let's say the other player has, uh, let's say three, okay? So all in total, there would be five dice. Now, with Shadow Man, I would roll my two, and the other player's going to roll their three. And then based on the speed factor, which I'll mention in just a moment, I have to move this a little bit. We'll determine who is going to select a die first. So you're going to go in order selecting a die. Well, of course, we've got the hearts out here. These hearts are healing, so that's a double heal. That uh, little lightning bolt is upgrade. The star is uh, a wild. That is a recon, and that is a speed. So you can you can actually make an adjustment to your speed factor. So let's go back to this. So let's say I just happen to be the one who's first. Well, I want to get some healing because Shadow Man's already been beaten up pretty decently. So I'm going to take that, right? And let's say my opponent decides, okay, they're taking that one. They're getting rid of that one. So they're, they're going to heal up too. Then I might take the wild, which can be used as anything. Then they take the wild. Even though it'd be my turn, right? We're going back and forth, right? You can only take as many dice, any as many montage dice as you rolled in the first place. So if you have one player who's got four dice in the, or four mind and the other player has two mind. It doesn't matter if the person with the two is going first. Yeah, sure. They're going to get to pick those two dice in order. But then the other player, well, they're going to get the rest of the dice. They're going to all be there. So you also have montage cards. So each of the players have these montage cards. And. Kind of, and these symbols operate the same way as the dice. And you have three slots up here. So let's say for an example, oh, uh, let's do this one. Let's do uh, that one. And let's do a recon just for... Okay, so so let's say these are the montage cards. So we see there's a sl there's kind of a slice down the middle. There's a, a separator. This is speed. This is a speed icon, and this this would be uh, an upgrade icon. So knowing that Shadow Man has two heal, and you're gonna you're not gonna reveal all these cards at one time. You're gonna re you're gonna Reveal them in order. So you're gonna see, okay, so that's it's gonna be one speed. Now that's gonna that's gonna help you as far as determining the player order for the rest of this round, essentially. And then you get this. So I would have that one. You got the two wild, another wild, so that you could be buying ability upgrades at a cost of two which would go into here. You could use just one and get, say, the Brass Knuckles, which is going to give you an extra attack. It's going to go in there. So you're going to resolve these in the order. So you got the two heal. I could get rid of two red cubes because the red cubes just take one heal icon to be able to heal. A black one... So eventually I'm going to have to play one of these severe cards. A black one is going to cost me three to get rid of. Three healing tokens, or I should say icons, to get rid of. So let's say, uh, okay, I decide I'm going to do the two heal and get rid of these. Then I'm going to get another heal. Then the interesting thing here is the reconnaissance. Okay. 
just a pair of binoculars. A pair of binoculars is going to allow you to see what is this boss card. Because this is one of the bad guys. And these are dealt face down onto the dens. And to start off with, you don't have the big bosses in play when, when these cards are first started to be dealt off. The big bosses aren't in play. The blitz cards aren't in play because for one, you got to work your way up to the big bosses and you have to buy vengeance cards to, to get those big boss cards. Because remember these vengeance cards, these, this is just the cards I have, you know, off to the side. They're not the ones in play right now. So these are actually face down. They're showing you these victory points. The whole whole thing with the game is victory points. You need victory points. Yeah, sure. You want to go lay the smack down on all these bad guys, but you want the victory points. So the montage is pretty, pretty easy. And when you have something like this, you're going to get, you're going to earn recon tokens. Now you may not have recon tokens every, every montage it's very possible you may get none or you may get quite a few. And what the recon tokens are going to do in the combat, well, before combat begins, but after the montages, you're going to be able to spend these so you can flip over to see who is the bad guy who's on this or, or henchmen or you know, minor big bad on this den, which we do have this guy in our vengeance cards that are in play. Plus, we already know that this is the gang that we not necessarily want to focus on, but that we want to take down the big bad. Okay, so once you've done some upgrades, and let's say, all right, let's do uh, for just to kind of speed this up. A little bit. Let's do um, arm lopper and machete. As far as these upgrades go, I'll just pop this up there real quick. Ta -da. You can only have three active at one time, but you can have more than one. So you could stack stuff that's like a one shot. You kind of stack those up in a spot. So that's usually kind of cool. Okay. So once you're once you're through the montage and you try to heal guy, heal people up, now you're going to look at the speed. And basically, what you're going to do is you're going to just add these up together. If you happen to have, uh, you know, a speed die that you ended up with, whoever's got the highest total, they're going to go first. So they are the they are going to remain as the first player until you go into another montage. There are three montages in the game. There's way more combat than there are montages. So, all right. So moving right along, we got the montage done. Let's say, let's get into the real meat and potatoes of vengeance. It is the laying down the smackdown <laughs> on, on the bad guys. So during the combat phase, you're going to have the reveal of the gang. Now, some gangs have specific, well, I shouldn't say some, they all have specific henchmen kind of uh, special abilities. And you'll have cards that'll tell you what each one of them does. So we got the Lords, says they're gonna resolve any of these red attacks before the player gets to do anything. You got the Zeus clan. You got the King Kengu Kai and the Hell Riders. Now I think there's uh, an additional gang that's out there. I don't know if it was a Kickstarter or if it's another. It's a like a special add-on. But I'm 99% positive that Greenbrier has an additional gang. All right, so let's say it was my turn. I add the recon token, I spent the recon token, and you can only have six recon tokens total at any one time. And you're not always gonna necessarily have a montage where you're gonna be able to get more recon tokens. So sometimes 
Sometimes you might be forced to, to attack a den without spending a recon token. Basically what that means is you just don't know what gang it is. And if you attack them and you don't have vengeance cards for that gang, eh, you're just not really going to score as many victory points as you would have liked. So I have revealed the gang and we see that we've got different color bad guy icons on the den and the reason why I didn't put any minis on here is because I wanted to be able to bring this up. So the black are going to just be grunts. The blue is a gunman. Uh, the red is a uh, henchman and that's the big bad. Well, I, it's not the big, big bad, but it's like the lieutenant. Let's say the like lieutenant. So then what you're going to do is you're actually going to take this is Shadow Man's mini right here. That is Shadow Man. And you'll have a white base to it. Uh, one thing I had to point out, the bases were kind of tough to shove these <laughs> miniatures into. So, and then we've got a gunman here. Got a couple of grunts. Grunts are just you know, anybody's. And then we've got there. They also have blockers, which can kind of prevent you from moving through areas. And then, uh, so if there was a big bad, the big bad, the big boss would have gone in that spot. But there is really no big boss. Not early on, not in the early dens. So what'll happen here is once you move into combat, now you are looking to roll your attack dice. And you roll as many as you have skill. And you also include this green die. Okay. So Shadow Man's got four. So you roll. That is not a good result, right? That is that is a bad guy. It's a bad guy result. This is a move. A run, actually. And this is a gun. And then that's going to give you the option of an X or a gun. So here's the weird thing about vengeance is guns can only be used in zones that are adjacent to you. You cannot use a gun in the area you're, you're at. All right. So what we need to do here is we're not in this area yet. So from my understanding, this is not, these dice are not going to hurt us at the moment. I might be wrong. I might, might not have this rule correct, but because what this is supposed to do is this is supposed to activate enemies that can attack you. But we don't have anybody who's a gunman here. So we're not in this area yet. So they can't really do anything. I'm sure somebody's going to out there is going to jump in and say, no, no, Jeff, uh, you don't have that right. But that's that's kind of how we got the rules, uh, how we understood it. So you can resolve this stuff in any way you would like. But just for an example, let's just do. Uh, let's do. A couple of hits there. And do that. Now, you also will have. Uh, where did I put that? Is it here? Yep. There we go. Everybody has, each of the players has a handy dandy little reference card that's going to tell you what in the world are these bad guys, right? So it's going to tell you green is a tough guy, takes two hits to kill. A gunman has a health of one, but they can hit and make an attack in an adjacent zone and they do one hurt, one point of health damage to you. The blocker has one health, 
and he can block you from actually moving out of an area until you get rid of them. Then we've got the grunts, and it says when assigning shots to a zone containing a grunt, you have to hit the grunt first. They got a one health, right? Got it? Good? Cool. Pretty easy. Then, of course, we know that we've got... For the lords, their henchmen, right? We also know their henchmen have two health. Because it says right there on the card, two. Oops. And we've got two henchmen here. So you can resolve these dice any way you want. So I could, because even though I don't own a gun, doesn't mean I can't make this attack. So I could use my gun and I take out the grunt, right? Easy enough. He's only got one hit. Then I can use my move and I move into here, right? So I move into the next zone and I can use my attack. Now this is two hits. It's good for, it can do two health damage. He's got two. I'm gonna spend that to not take this guy out. Now I could spend my other run to move up into here onto the basketball court but I don't want to do that because then these guys can attack me. So no thanks, I'll take a pass. So I will stay down here. You would think in most games you say, oh, okay, well now the bad guys get to take their turn and attack you. No, <laughs> they really don't. They're activated by these black kind of uh, sort of ninja. You know, like, I swear, that's like the cut from the ninja dice game. I might be wrong, <laughs> but I swear, I think that's the same cut from the ninja die. Uh, a, a dice game from Greenbrier. <sighs> okay. So anyway, so that would, that would be how the dice went. So I've got that. You, you have to look here at for for in here for this green die because this green die will tell you what you have to use this either or for it's kind of it's kind of like a wild die almost but since I don't have the next item telling me that I have to use it as a, as a gun I mean I'm going to use it as a gun I can use the gun and I can take the gunman out over here. That would have still left me with my my other run move, but I don't want to go cuz if you're in the if you're in a zone where the you have enemies, you're going to take a hit for each one of those enemies. So that's like their attack. It just happens after your turn just like you can move through areas by spending the run die that have bad guys in it if you're trying to get to another spot. Um, because say for an example, you, you need to take out somebody who's gonna be a lot tougher that you've got your dice for. So let's say you got that two attack and a, a, a baddie who takes two, two hits to kill is in a zone that you need to move to and you want to be able to use these dice, you might spend a move and you'll take hits for doing that. If you finish up in a zone where uh, you still have active enemies, then they will do one hit to you. But there's, there's no die rolling or anything like that. The whole thing going on is you're only going to get three rounds to roll your dice to clear off this den, to clear this den out. So, <laughs> this, early on it's pretty, it's gonna be easy. Okay, so this is the next one, right? So I have not moved, ah, let's see what we got. Got three guns, got the bad guy here, and we got an X. 
Well, we don't have a move, but interestingly enough, the special ability for Shadow Man is I can change a gun or uh, a one-hit melee attack into a run. So what I would do here is I would spend my one shot. Oh, actually, should have been like that. Should have been the grunt. Oops, saw the grunt. Didn't kill the grunt. He was supposed to get that gunshot. Okay, so I could use my shot here. Take this guy down. That's that. I could change this to a run because that's his skill. So he moves into here. And then I have one shot. So I've got the one shot. So I can ding him for a point. It need, I need two to kill him. So, and I don't want to move in there with him because then he's going to hurt me. So really, effectively, I would maybe end up not, not doing anything else. Because uh, I don't want to move in there because I don't want to take the hit. Because as you keep taking these cubes of damage, it's gonna, it, you're never gonna ever be fully healthy and you're never gonna have enough of what you really want as far as the, the mind, the skill, as well as the, uh, the health. So you have to really protect this as much as you can because whenever you're playing these vengeance cards, you have to take that detrimental effect of that card. Whoops. So it's not as like, okay, well, I got this beatdown to start the game, and now uh, I, I'm completely healed. So, so that'd be the, the uh, second round of rolling dice. I'm going to wipe this guy out. Okay, luckily enough. Whoops. I said that, and I almost couldn't pull it off. So with the... Um, with the lords, he's a henchman, so he has a special ability. It would have been that if I were in the same zone as, as them, that they would be able to attack me before I got to do anything. But I'm not in the same zone at the moment. So, I could move and do two hits and take them out. So you're not going to collect victory points for all of these different... Uh, gang members that you've, you've wiped out, right? You're just going to get the two points that are up here in the corner. You're going to get the victory points for the boss. And then, because we got the vengeance card. So you're going you're gonna to tally up the victory points. And that is effectively how the combat rounds go. There's uh, the other optional rules and and so forth, and there's there's more a little more detail uh, to uh, some of the some of the dice as far as uh, the options available to you with especially th this green die. But the reality is, it's not like uh, I go you go kind of thing, or it's you know like there's an AI behind. The bad guys, the bad guys pretty much remain static. The bad guys don't come, you know, chasing after you, ganging up on you and stuff like that. So that is basically how that operates. So you're going to end up doing the montage to start off. Then you have a combat. And then, of course, everybody's going to go through their, take their combat. So there's some downtime. Then you'll have another montage. You got two more combats. And then... Another montage, two more combats, and then the end. Oh, and I forgot to mention, you could get that wild token. And these can be spent uh, for uh, upgrades. I mean, they can be spent as any of the icons during the mo montage, or you can hang on to them because they are worth victory points too. So once everybody has gone through their combat phase, then you would move to the, another montage, you're gonna reset the dens. So you're gonna actually be looking at um, level three dens. And there's there's kind of rules as far as how you 
swap out the dens. And then it's just a, a little bit of rinse and repeat throughout. Then once you get to, oh, I, I'm sorry. Once why I should talk about what happens if you run out of, <laughs> duh. If you get knocked down to zero in any of these, if you end up down to, to nothing in any of these during your combat turn, then you're considered knocked out. There's no player elimination in the game. You're just knocked out. So it ends in your defeat. And of course, you're not scoring any victory points. As I mentioned before, the name of the game is scoring victory points. It's banking away all the victory points. So that's basically what happens if you get dropped down to zero. Plus, you got to remember, there's nothing you can really do <laughs> if you're at zero. So you're going to be sitting there going, okay, when's the next montage phase so I can maybe get some of these points back? So it's not going to be unusual for you to be in in pretty dire straits character-wise throughout the game. So uh, effectively, I mean, that's really sort of the game in a nutshell. I know I'm missing some stuff, and I, I, I guarantee I've, I've glossed over something or gotten, some, gotten something incorrect. But for the most part, that's what you're kind of looking at. And... Playtime to start off with is probably about, well, they say about a half hour per player. If you're playing with four, you're really looking at the first, first time you, you get into it. Because, I mean, there can be some analysis paralysis as far as, well, what, what montage dice do I draft? Oh, how should I allocate these, these attack rolls? Because remember, you're just resolving these in order. So that's sometimes, I know from playing um, Zapocalypse and Zapocalypse 2, it's kind of the same sort of thing where there's like a, you're resolving your dice in, uh, and some of them, you know, you got to add up, here it's not, you're not adding up totals to do things, but it's so, sort of the same thing where you're like, okay, I resolve this first and then I do this and then I'm able to do that. So there's a little bit of that to it. All right, so, uh, and I'll just kind of hold this up a little bit like that, like this, okay. So what do I think of Vengeance? Oh, and uh, there is a time limit, so you can't mess around too much. There is the timer. Gotta be honest, uh, we really didn't use the timer. Because <laughs> it was sort of, yeah, we, we knew what we were doing. We... Plus, I, you know, sometimes I'm not real keen on tossing an egg timer out there uh, unless it's, you know, like trivia kind of thing. So, uh, I gotta be honest, we sort of ignored it. Anyway, but I mean, that does help keep the game moving along at a pretty good clip. So, as far as Vengeance itself, I like it. I, I think it's a pretty cool game. I, I can't say I like it more than, say, like... Uh, Folklore, uh, the affliction that recently came out that uh, just finished up another kick. I think it's finished up the Kickstarter run almost. Yeah, it did. It finished up the Kickstarter run. I think it was last week, maybe. And that's coming out for another uh, print run. So that's pretty cool. So what did I like about Vengeance? Uh, thematically, it's pretty cool. I dug that. I, I kind of get a kick out of how you're you're constantly getting beat down by these gangs. So it, it's never to the point where you, there's, there's always some sort of compromise you have to make when playing the game, especially as you get into the later combat rounds when now you've got more baddies and you're usually just hanging by a thread and it's not unusual to successfully complete a combat run on basically, you know, fumes and have to wait for the montage to be able to even kind of boost yourself back up. So I did like that. I do like the dice allocation. I, I kind of dig the, I, I do dig the draft, the drafting of the dice for the montage because each player is going to look at things a bit differently 
what they really need to do. Because the way the game is, is really set up is if, if you don't kill the right gang, big boss at the end, you lose. But some of the characters really don't have that as an, as an objective. So, uh, you can kind of kind of play it a little bit different. You could play it like strictly by the way it's set up. And, you know, if you don't get your objectives done, it doesn't matter what these victory points on the side here say that you survived or, you know, you went out and you, know, you got your revenge or you just went, you know, totally bananas and, you know, it was overkill. You can, you can kind of look at it that way, but with the objectives, your character's supposed to complete those objectives, and if you don't complete those objectives, really, you've kind of lost. Even if you had the most victory points, you've kind of lost. So I did, do dig that. I dig uh, a lot of the replayability with the different upgrades that are available, uh, with the, the special, like the equal rights, the kill them all, uh, the, they, they consider them missions. They're not really missions, they're just... Hey, if you do this, whatever player does this, they get bonus victory points and so on and so forth. So that's kind of cool too. So it's, it's always a little bit different. What I had a problem wrapping my head around, and I guess I'm still kind of having a problem wrapping my head around, is the, the game is just loaded down with minis. There are tons of miniatures in this game because you've got uh, it's like there's like 16 grunt figures and there are eight of each and then you've got two copies of the big bad each of the big bads because it is possible for players to kill the same big bad it's not as if you know two players have to kill the same big bad so the first person who gets them wins kind of thing now there's there's a possibility that each of you could kill the same big bad in different dens and it's fine that's okay uh, what kind of throws me off is there's all these miniatures, but the miniatures remain static, except for the hero character. The hero character does move from location to a location, from area to area. The baddies really don't. So I don't really understand why the game was made with miniatures. I'm not knocking it. I'm not knocking the game <laughs> because it has miniatures. And I know there are a lot of people out there who are like, oh man, they dig that visual flair that miniatures bring to a game. And, and so do I. I love minis. I wish I could actually spend some time painting some once in a while. Just never have time. But I don't see... The game would not really be any different with standees or with counters. And the price would have been way less. So, for an example, like as Apocalypse, as Apocalypse Two, Folklore, the ones that those all come with a bunch of miniatures, and they're and they're they're cool miniatures, they're cool sculpts and everything. Plastic's a little soft. Same with these, you know, whatever. Not everybody's gonna paint the minis anyway. And then those who do, they know how to treat that plastic, to stiffen it up. But in those games, the miniatures move around. There, there's tactical movement. To a certain extent, not so much in Zapocalypse, in Zapocalypse 2, but the zombies do move, the characters, squads do move. Folklore, obviously enough, that's kind of a GMless RPG board game. Those miniatures, they move, there's, there's tactical decisions that have to be made. With this, no, there aren't. So, I just don't know. I, uh, $95... I mean, granted, it's got a lot of miniatures in that, but those miniatures are not critical to the gameplay. I, I don't know. I don't know if it was a decision by Greenbrier. I know this game was produced uh, in cooperation with Mighty Boards. Was it Mighty Boards who said, hey, you got to have these miniatures in it? I, I just, I don't know. I think the, I think the $95 price point is going to turn people off, even though it's got loads of miniatures. There are a lot of multiple sculpts or duplicates of the same sculpt, but there are quite a few, like the characters are all different. You got the henchmen, stuff like that. Uh, 
I don't, you know, I don't know. That's what throws me, that what really throws me off. Uh, I'm not, I don't understand why the decision was made to go with miniatures in this game. But I did, I did enjoy it. Uh, I, I got a kick out of it. Uh, my nephew Cameron got a kick out of it. Greg, my brother, he liked it. Took a little time to kind of wrap our heads around uh, some of the aspects to it, especially the whole, like, you gotta, you buy vengeance cards. And it's sort of like, well, why would I buy vengeance cards, which are just basically adding more of a beat down to me? The whole thing is you need those victory points. So it's kind of a trade off, you know? You're getting, you're getting beat up, but you wanna have, you know, a more variety. Plus, when you kill some of these, these bad guys, some of these henchmen, you can score a lot of points if you've got multiple copies of that that henchman in play in front of you. So I liked it. I think it's I think it's cool. I definitely think it's worth uh, a purchase. It's just it's just I, I I can't get over it. I you know and maybe I'm harping too much on this, but I just I I don't see this as this was a game that you had to have miniatures, and and this probably will get some flack from from the gaming have have not folks out there which is probably a topic i might talk about a little bit next week but uh overall i'm going to say numerically value wise i would give vengeance an eight out of ten like i said i liked it i enjoyed it there's a little bit of rinse and repeat as the game continues along but not a huge amount. A little bit of downtime because everybody's kind of sitting around as each player's doing their combat turns and stuff. But the montage and everything else, everybody's, you know, involved in it. But uh, like I said, I, I just don't know why there's miniatures in this game. Anyway, so that is Vengeance from my friends over at Greenbrier Games. As I said, I'm giving it a thumbs up. I would think that if this, uh, if Vengeance goes to a second print run like uh, Folklore just did, which interestingly enough, this second print run for Folklore does not have miniatures in it. There's standees and it did bring the price down. Uh, I would think they're probably going to go, uh, Greenbrier's going to go in the direction of probably counters or standees for the bad guys. Maybe maybe they'll stay with miniatures for the heroes or something. I don't know. This is just off the top of my head I'm I'm thinking this. But uh and of course the price would come down. Don't know, can't tell you. But it is a cool game. I did enjoy it and uh be sure to go to greenbriergames.com to check it out. That is it for today's show. Man, we went wow. I was trying to do 90 minutes. I'm well over 90 minutes. I mean, for the show itself, not, not for just the review. But uh, tomorrow, I am doing the unboxing for Welcome to Centerville from my friends over at uh, GMT Games. I almost said Greenbrier again. So be sure to check that out. Uh, of course, I'll have more news. And one thing I wanted to quickly mention... I had the news piece about Sakura Arms from uh, AEG earlier, and I should I, I was gonna toss this up like sorta after that news piece, and I completely forgot. It came via UPS today. I'm making sure I got the the right because the front and the back <laughs> are very very similar, so I want to make sure that I actually got the box front showing and it's it's uh, right side up. No, I think I'm going to unbox this on Monday. I think we'll take a peek at this on Monday. I've got some other stuff cooking. Uh, so, but tomorrow is welcome to Centerville 4 Family Friendly Friday. I guess that's what we'll call it. Once again, I am Jeff McLear and when you're not checking out the Daily Dope, be sure to visit TheGamingGang.com for the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. Well, by now you know the drill. Get your geek on at TheGamingGang.com. And until tomorrow, thanks so much for watching. Mm -hmm.